Um, so that's it for the administrative details. I wanted to introduce our guest speaker. Um, Kevin Gallagher is the DevOps engineer for Zcash, and he is going to talk to you about their cryptocurrency system. And let me unplug my computer so we can use his. Great, thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. Hey everyone, thanks for coming out. Let me just plug in here. All right. So Kevin Gallagher, I'm a DevOps engineer for Zcash, been working with them since uh, last August, and I'm going to give you guys a little rundown on uh, Zcash, what it is, how it works, uh, possibly how you could get involved. Um, so Zcash is a private anonymous cryptocurrency based on Bitcoin, which uh, offers tr strong privacy in the form of shielded transactions, meaning you can send money to someone and have both uh, the amount, the sender, and the origin of the payment uh, not be disclosed. Um, obviously, in the beginning, the, there was Bitcoin. Uh, probably needs no explainer. Peer-to-peer, -peer, open source, decentralized cryptocurrency based on a public ledger or blockchain um, where everything's public. You can see the activity of uh, w how money is changing hands. Uh, so transactions are not truly anonymous. They're pseudonymous. Um, and Bitcoin actually has a big fungibility problem uh, which in essence means that uh, you, if the source of uh, coins is tainted, then you might not want anything to do with those coins. Like, for example, uh, if the coins pass through uh, some hidden service drug market or something like that, um, or you know, other illicit activity. Um, so fungibility is one of the problems that Zcash aims to solve. Uh, there have been many things that came before Bitcoin and things that came after uh, that have been inspired uh, by Bitcoin. Um, right now it's at a record high, over 2200 USD. Um, and when the developers of Zcash started the project, they based um, the software on Bitcoin's code uh, because they knew it was something that was tested and had been used in practice uh, since 2009. Uh, so in cryptography, there's relatively recent novel development called zero knowledge proofs. Uh, it's a method by which one party, the prover, can prove to another party that a given statement is true without conveying any information apart from the fact that the statement is true. Uh, the underlying science to the Zcash protocol is like only three or four years old. Some smart people got together, realized that you could apply this to uh, digital money. Um, and the actual term for the type of zero-knowledge proof that is used in Zcash, it's called a ZK-SNARK, the form of succinct, non-interactive zero-knowledge proof. Um, the idea itself uh, was proposed in 2013 as ZeroCoin. Uh, a year later, the scientists um, improved it uh, so that it would hide not just the um, origin and recipient, but also the amount of the transaction. Uh, the original paper was a ZeroCash paper uh, sorry, zero coin and then the zero cash paper, and those are both online if you want to look into it more. I'm not going to get heavy into the math or crypto side of things because it's not really my shtick. And I mean, as a general disclaimer, um, I don't speak for Zcash Company. I'm just their systems administrator, and um, but I might use a few technical terms. But if you're confused about something, you can ask me after. Um, so about the Zcash Company. Um, a lot of people thought this was a great idea, so they came together. Uh, it was announced at the beginning of 2016 um, by Zuko Wilcox, who was previously known for his work on least authority systems uh, in Tahoe. Tahoe is a distributed file system where you can, like, you can store files across multiple servers, and if you take down any one server, then the data will still be there. You won't lose the stuff you backed up. It is an international team of academics, cryptographers, and computer science engineers. We have people uh, both in the Bay Area and Colorado, uh, in Israel, um, all over the place. It's taken in uh, $3 million in investment. Um, and actually, just the other day, uh, they announced a partnership with uh, JP Morgan to add its zero knowledge technology to their Quorum blockchain uh, ledger. So there's been a lot of interest and activity from banks, um, financial services, 
companies and, and businesses and so on in getting a true, uh, you know, private transaction solution. Um, so ever, actually ever since that announcement, the price and market cap of uh, ZEC, which is the term for a unit of Zcash, has been surging, uh, which is pretty cool. I mean, and, you know, I, I, I'm just here as someone who wants to promote uh, the adoption of the technology, but I would say if you want to get in, now is a pretty time, good time to get in. That's not investment advice. but um, So this was the day we were in uh, the New York Times the day after launch. Uh, mining works the same way that it does uh, as in Bitcoin, wherein um, there's a proof of work where people have to perform some calculations on their CPU or GPU. Um, you know, in the beginning of Bitcoin, it all started with you're just performing calculations on your processor, and then uh, you get the block reward, and the block each block itself c contains transactions. But um, over time, that eventually moved to video cards, and then eventually that moved to custom uh, ASICs or custom integrated circuits that can that are optimized to perform these operations. Um, so. What Zcash people did is chose an algorithm, a mining algorithm that uh, would be resistant to people trying to build those hardware solutions, and um, is memory has memory hardness uh, called EcoHash, where essentially, um, like the more RAM you have in your in your computer, the better you will be at mining Zcash. Um, now, a very important thing to know if you want to know anything about Zcash, there is uh, something called the Founders Award. Um, so this means that uh, like 10% of the monetary base, um, the total monetary base will be this, end up being the same as Bitcoin. It'll be 20 million coins uh, at the time that the that you know coins stop being created. Um, we'll go to uh, a set of the investors, uh, the founders, employees, and advisors, advisors on the project. There's something called the Zcash Company Strategic Reserve, which is intended to help the Zcash company bring this technology past the launch phase. And then there's uh, the Zcash Foundation, which I'll talk about later. Um, of course, this is not without uh, controversy, but um, the people that created Zcash felt that this w would be the ideal way to steward uh, and f find a way to finance and fund the development and the evolution of uh, the Zcash technology itself. Um, so, you, as you can see here, this is a graph of what uh, the Founders War looks like in terms of um, how much uh, Zcash coins will eventually constitute the Founders Ward. Um, it's fairly substantial. Uh, there, there is an also a difference uh, Zcash has from Bitcoin, which was a slow start period, um, because Zcash was very experimental and, and novel, as I mentioned. We want to make sure that we didn't screw anything up. And if we did, we want to be able to roll, roll it back or possibly fork um, the, the protocol or, or even call it off if, if necessary. We launched on October 28th, uh, 2016. And thankfully, everything went smoothly or as planned. But we just figured maybe we should start slow at first uh, with the, dis the actual distribution of coins um, just to be safe. So that was that. Um, there are two types of transactions in Zcash. Um, there's shielded or unshielded, or, or transparent rather. So a transparent transaction is essentially the same as a regular Bitcoin transaction. Um, they both use different types of addresses though. Um, the, so the interesting thing is that when you can send funds f either way, like from a public address to a, um, a shielded address or from a, a shielded sorry, a public to a shielded, or public to public, or um, shielded to public, or just totally private. So co coins have inputs and outputs, and they can come in. You might know where they came from, and but then you can like shield them like magic as they're going out. And uh, so this is pretty cool. <laughs> um, but one of the interesting things we've seen since we, since, uh, we launched, essentially, is that actually shielded addresses are not uh, being used very much. And the reasons for that are, um, you know, debatable. Some of it has to do with the, the computational work that actually requires to create one of these shielded transactions, these join splits, uh, is quite intensive and can take some time on, on standard uh, machines or, or mobile phones or what have you. Um, but 
we would definitely like to see the ecosas ecosystem um, become more shielded, of course. Um, so like if you had a, a, an ecosystem where most of the value is stored in predominantly in transparent addresses, it would look something like this. Uh, if you have an ecosystem where most of the value is in shielded addresses, that, that's what we want. We want people to be using the privacy features of Zcash, then it would look something like this. Um, there's another cool feature of Zcash has, which is the encrypted memo field. Um, of course, I know what you're th thinking is probably like, oh yeah, we have this awesome private new cryptocurrency. Oh, this is going to be great for uh, criminals and money launderers, what have you. Uh, but no, actually that's not what it's for. And um, so one of the actual uses of this memo, memo field is envisioned as kind of like the note on a personal check. Um, so you can have things like uh, receipts or auditors or uh, for you know things of that nature. And there's a program uh, called Z Message, uh, which will let you embed these messages in the blockchain and send things to one another. One of the coolest things we pulled off was the parameter generation. So um, in order to make these zero knowledge private transactions work, um, it actually relies on something called the public parameters. In order to either construct a transaction or to verify that you can spend the coins, um, you need these so-called public parameters. It's uh, part of the ZK SNARK formula. Uh, so if you're familiar with encryption, you can think of it kind of like the public key, the corresponding private key uh, for which would theoretically allow someone to forge money in perpetuity undetected, which is very bad. So of course, we want to make sure that uh, this never happened and that the private key, which we basically refer to as crypto toxic waste, would never come into existence. Um, so between August 21st and 23rd, six participants, six um, trusted, well-known people in the community ran a lengthy and secure multi-party computation protocol on air-gapped hardware. Uh, so these people, uh, most of them like went off the grid, uh, went somewhere else away from their home or left their phones behind, just used intense operational security um, and bought brand new computers uh, with cash from the uh, computer store and um, ran this uh, software we created, which was on a very minimal hardened uh, distribution of uh, Alpine Linux. Um, and essentially ran this multi-party computation protocol to generate the public parameters. Uh, so extensive documentation, video and audio evidence was, prov was produced so that like after the fact, people will be able to go back and verify, oh yeah, uh, there was no weird surveillance or nothing weird happened here. Um, and so that like essentially all six participants would have to collude in order to... Um, in order to pull off uh, stealing the private key. And none of the computers were connected to the internet. So if you want to learn more about that, there's a, uh, a page online that has more details. And there's also a paper about it, the uh, MPC, multi-party protocol. So this is an image of uh, Zuko um, taking a grinder to uh, the computer that he used uh, in the ceremony. And uh, actually, one of the participants, um, Peter Todd, actually did it out of his car. He drove like 2,000 kilometers or something across the country, across Canada, with the uh, computer doing the calculations in his car uh, the whole time. And then uh, he fried his uh, RAM pretty good at the end. So wanted to destroy all the equipment that this was done on. Now, of course, when you're um, developing software that uh, and you want to offer strong security assurance to your users, it's great to uh, have that code audited. Uh, so before launch, they were, we were audited by uh, NCC Group, uh, performed a analysis primarily looking for vulnerabilities using static and dynamic analysis and fuzz testing. And CoinSpec also uh, reviewed Zcash's uh, code, which again was a code fork of Bitcoin. And um, uh, the majority of the issues that they found were fixed. Um, another thing that I worked on personally is deterministic builds. Um, so a big problem in software development that I think not enough people talk about is how do you actually know you're getting the same software as everyone else and it's not being malici maliciously modified? Um, so Zcash uses a deterministic build system. Uh, when developers compile programs, the main source of a difference or determinism in the software is usually timestamps. 
like I created this program at a certain time. So to remove uh, determinism, or yeah, sorry, indeterminism, to remove indeterminism, uh, what you want to do is essentially strip it of, of timestamps and, and so on. But sometimes there are, there are other weird issues. But uh, the system is based on Gideon, and what it does essentially is take everything that goes into the Zcash software, the daemon and the client that makes the program, the source code, the libraries, uh, the dependencies and system libraries, uh, you take a crypt cryptographic hash of that. And uh, if you don't know what a hash is, it's essentially a unique identifier that refers to a piece of data and can only match that data, and it's collision resistant. Um, and then you take a, a hash of the, out the output, which is the Zcash application, um, have multiple people do this, and then compare the results. Um, all of the hashes should be the same. If anything's different, then something's weird. <laughs> something might, someone might be trying to slip some malicious code in or, or something got messed up. Um, so this is a process that I think more projects should, should be following. Um, but I just want to note that. Uh, in order to get, if you're interested in getting started with Zcash, um, I would suggest that there's a couple exchanges. Uh, there's one called Kraken, kraken.com, shapeshift.io, Poloniex, are, all have Zcash support. Uh, you can buy, sell, and trade various cryptocurrencies on those sites. Um, if you want a good user-friendly Zcash experience, then the Jax wallet, which is uh, available for iOS and Android, um, is probably the best way to go. However, the main Zcash client is still a Linux application without a GUI. Uh, I know, I'm sorry, but Windows and uh, OS X support is in the works. Um, there's a strong community of developers and independent people who are keen on making that happen, and I'm sure it will be a supported platform officially uh, in the future. Uh, my job uh, includes monitoring. Um, essentially, we want to build systems to monitor the health and state of the network, collecting metrics and logs, and from which we can kind of figure out different states to alert upon and respond to. Uh, we hope to be able to analyze, identify situations like, for example, a large number of transactions uh, not being confirmed, you know, sitting in the, in the memory pool and miners are not accepting them into blocks. Uh, if there are invalid transactions or blocks being propagated on the network, uh, if a big number of, of peers, like nodes running the Zcash software, all disconnect from the network at the same time, that would be bad. Or if there's a chain fork occurring, essentially a fork is like in these public ledger systems you're, you're building on, on blockchains and then oh someone decides they want to follow different rules or the protocols change and now they, the two sides have diverged and they're, they're building on different chains. Um, or the effects of an active denial service or exploitation, which hopefully won't happen. This is just a graph I just pulled the other night of um, active Zcash nodes. Uh, as you can see we have people in uh, countries all over the world running Zcash, which is good. Not every country, but uh, might get there someday. Um, we fixed a bug. So this is an interesting situation we dealt with just last month. Um, it turns out that in version 1.04, I believe, there was uh, something introduced where by the priority level of the transaction, which is a field in a transaction that essentially dictates or tells miners, oh, hey, accept me in into your block. Um, make this transaction, get it confirmed. Uh, could, could a certain priority level could allow a um, out-of-bounds memory access, trigger a segmentation fault in the program, and crash, essentially crash the application uh, remotely. Um, and we actually saw this happen a few times. So if you look at this graph on May uh, 8th and May 10th, the big jump off there is you know, 50 peers all disconnecting at, at once. Um, so this was fixed in our latest release. Uh, if you're already using Zcash, then I'd urge you to upgrade. Um, but if you just run the latest version, you're fine. Um, yeah, as I've stated, Zcash is novel and experimental. Its creators have actually asserted a willingness to fork in order to improve the protocol and guide its evolution. At some point, it might just become necessary. Um, there are people out there who don't like the fact that there's a founder's reward. So they came up with Z Classic or, or Zen, uh, where the concept is basically similar, but it's just Zcash without the founder's reward. Uh, additionally, the scientists um, behind Zcash are working on 
new form of ZK SNARK that doesn't require a trusted setup, the parameter generation ceremony I referred to earlier. Um, so it would be really cool if you could, you could find a way to do these uh, shielded join split transactions without requiring the, this elaborate crazy OPSEC ceremony uh, to generate uh, the public parameters. And uh, in addition, uh, we recognize that C slash C++ is a dinosaur that personally I feel needs to go away. Um, it just has issues with memory safety and the, the vast amount of vulnerabilities that we see in software uh, are, are traced to those issues in C and C++. So there are safer languages to develop in, and so there are ambitions to develop um, a new Zcash client in a language like Rust, for example. Future near-term priorities uh, for the development team. Um, features that we want to see happen. One of them is payment disclosure, which would allow you to reveal uh, information about a specific payment to a specific party of your choice. So selective uh, disclosure, whereby um, could be used by an exchange to prove to a customer or to a third party educator that they sent the payment without actually revealing the payment information. There's payment offloading. Uh, which will essentially allow light wallets. So as I mentioned, these uh, shielded transactions can be somewhat expensive um, computationally or resource-wise. So you know, you might not want to use up all the, all of the storage space on your phone. So we want to make a way to allow people to um, allow other servers to perform those, those computations without actually sacrificing the privacy and security of the protocol. There's XCAT, cross-chain atomic transactions, that allow you to swap Zcash, uh, one versus one, for other things such as Ethereum or Bitcoin. And in general, uh, the planning a big cryptography upgrade to the core protocol, which will bring various improvements and enable new features. Um, yeah, as I, as I said, the science is very new and it's still developing. And um, there's, there's a lot more that you can actually do with this zero knowledge Technology. I mean, it it has applications to other industries. Um, yeah, and there's there's a lot of interest in f that businesses have that just say like like a lot of businesses would like to use Bitcoin, but they can't because it's all public. Um, so Zcash is great for that. Uh, governance is a huge issue in the cryptocurrency space in general. Uh, Bitcoin core development has been kind of uh, stalled or like just acrimoniously held back by big debates over how to scale and how to, uh, whether we can increase the block size and, and so on. Um, they made an attempt to create the Bitcoin Foundation, uh, which was regarded as, as a failure by most people. Um, ultimately, we think it would be inappropriate for a single for-profit company to maintain control over the future of Zcash in the long term. Um, so. Eventually, uh, the Zcash Foundation, nonprofit organization, will take over ownership of the technology and software itself and, um, and the community. So, I mean, there's a lot of stakeholders in the system, and we want it to succeed, and that's part of the idea. Um, but the Zcash Foundation is, will be independent of the company itself. Uh, further resources, uh, if you want to learn more. I'm sure there's th some things I forgot and I, I, I wanted to mention, but I didn't. Uh, there's our website, z.cash. You can go on uh, GitHub. We have forums and a community chat. Uh, I think that's it. Great. Thanks a lot. Yeah, I can take a few questions. Anything? You mentioned the, how the scaling debate with Bitcoin has kind of held back development. Does, res or does um, Zcash have the same? Does Zcash have the same um, issues with block size limitations and whether um, all transactions could be supported on the blockchain, or whether yeah. there'd be a need for second layer solutions? And what is a uh, Zcash developer's yeah. view on that? Um, that's an interesting question. Um, so. As a, as I understand it, I think the um, I think we chose a bigger block size than Bitcoin just by default. Um, so 
that should scale better. But also, as I mentioned, there's just challenges in general to scaling these these uh, shielded join split transactions because of the the computational resource aspect of it. Like sometimes they can take take a little while to for to actually create a shielded transaction. Um, so in general, it's harder for Zcash to scale than Bitcoin just by its very un like nature of what's underlying the protocol. Um, I think there were plans to look at uh, SegWit, uh, but hasn't implemented it from upstream. But they're continuously, um, we're continuously pulling in stuff from upstream Bitcoin. Like as Bitcoin is doing stuff, we're looking at it. We're also, there's other cryptocurrencies in the space, uh, like for people that are interested in privacy in general, there's also Monero or Dash, which I'm actually not that familiar with. Um, but we're constantly looking at, you know, ways to make it better. Um, the company itself, um, I, it's uh, your the intention with J.P. Morgan was to overlay the Zcash protocol with their enterprise uh, solution, right? Right. And so does the Zcash company uh, have like a list of companies to work with or do you uh, wait for like a client to come to you for help? Or how do you yeah. prioritize that? I'm not sure on that. I do know that, um, like as, as I said, the, the, the core technology and science like could have other applications and there are potentially other enterprises or businesses that are interested in it. And there, it has indeed been interest from banks and so on. Um, and that's part of what the JP Morgan thing was all about. Um, but yeah, I don't, it's, I'm not the one essentially who, uh, who answers those questions or figures out who to work with. So you could ask Zuko or uh, Jack Gavigan about that. catching this. Um, so you, you mentioned that there was work to come up with a new um, ritualist genesis. ceremony, trusted setup. Yeah. Ceremony. Uh, what happens to the existing chain? Would it fork on top of that and find some way to reconcile the existing system? Or would it just yeah. be a completely new uh, chain? Yeah, uh, well, I'm not sure about that. I think I think that there's a way um, to essentially, uh, s you might be able to switch out the parameters somehow and, the, and then like have one-to-one -one transfer of value to a new chain, like a smooth transition to a new chain. I'm not sure on that though, sorry. Okay. Hi. Yeah. My question is, apart from the trusted issuance model you mentioned, there's been on the net people criticizing Zcash, and the main issue I noticed- What, what criticizing? About Zcash, Zec, um, yeah, who? anonymity. I mean, the general public that I've seen, and the issues always point towards one very big issue, and that is, if there is indeed a sort of a way to subvert the system, and people start creating for themselves, um, Zek coin, mm -hmm. the system will never know. The system will what? Will never know. So you'll never right. know if somebody actually is uh, inflating the number of right. coins in there up to unlimited whenever they like, if they could subvert the system, right. if they could. It's, it's just that nobody has proven that they could or they couldn't. Like any bug, right? So I think there are there are people who are looking at or if, who have considered how to figure out if someone's forging money. Um, I'm not aware of like what the exact you know methods behind that are. Um, but yeah, of course, uh, er, the entire security of the of the Zcash system relies on getting that initial trusted setup, the the parameter generation ceremony correct. If, if you fail that, then yeah, but. Um, what I meant was that even if the issuance model was properly dr done without any subversion by the mm -hmm. group of six or whatever. Right, number, how can you audit yeah. the monetary base? Yes, the monetary base can still be subverted through right. some unknown method now. Unknown method. But you'll never be able to see it. Because it will be saying? shielded, right? Yes, correct. So isn't that, a, it seems to me, a major, major consideration. 
you know? Sure, I would agree with that. Um, yeah, I think there are ways of auditing the monetary base. Like I said, we can see how much money is in unshielded versus shielded. Uh, so, but I'm not sure what the, you know, I'm not sure how to answer. Yeah, thanks. No problem. I was curious about the um, extra like, resource expense of shielded transactions. Um, yeah. You mentioned the computation to form them. Are they larger in size, and do they take longer to validate? And how much so for, for those? Yeah, they're, they're both. <laughs> they're both larger, and they take longer to validate. I don't have exact numbers for you. Um, it, it's different on different hardware. I think it could be as, as few as three or six seconds to as long as a minute, varying between hardware. For a block or for a transaction? For a transa shielded transaction. Um, so, but, yeah. Yeah, I'm just the sysadmin, and, uh, you know, my interest is in seeing the kind of cypherpunk stream of the 90s come alive. You know, this idea that we're, we'll have truly free and anonym anonymous voluntary transaction and, and business, uh, you know, without any coercion. <laughs> sure. Um, so the graph you showed, uh, it was most users choose the transparent um, transactions over right. shielded. So how would you and your company, um, what would you guys do to promote users or encourage users to do the shielded transaction instead? Yeah, um, I mean, we've been actively pointing out the issue, and other people have too. Uh, we've written a number of blog posts about it. Uh, just the fact that, oh, it looks like not many people are using these enough. Um, so, and like I said, it's for a number of reasons. Um, just because it, it may be more convenient just to use the transparent, regular, non-private transactions, or there may be requirements, like you have to do that um, for, your, for your business, or, what ha or reporting requirements, or what have you. Uh, but, yeah. Got another one. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> no problem. Do you, um, do you know why they decided to have transparent transactions at all as part of the protocol? Hmm, that's an interesting question. Okay. <laughs> that's a good one. I yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, well, we want it to be, I think they wanted this thing to be useful, right? And um, so it appeals to people that care about privacy, and uh, as I know a lot of us do in this day and age. Uh, so I think, yeah, although the zero knowledge layer uh, could be used for other things, the most sensible and the first idea that we could, that has the most utility is just a classic cryptocurrency. Um, so, I mean, potentially if you include tr transparent transactions, then it might, it's just something people are familiar with already, you know? Uh, so might get, get you to use it. I don't know. You might start on transparent and then move to shielded or something. You know what I mean? Amazing. I thought I was going to drop that. Um, so I'm big on like accessibility and usability for people that are clueless. That's great. Um, and I don't see a lot of adoption of cryptocurrency in general uh, mm -hmm. for people that are not like diehard tech nerds, right. privacy paranoia people. Um, I feel like that's kind of a big gap in what's going on is like we are building this cyberpunk dream, but it is accessible to the very few. Um, and I'm wondering if there's any sort of plan in the future to make um, like Zcash or really any cryptocurrency that has privacy accessible to people in the same way that they would access normal banking. Yeah. Well, that's a big, big problem. And I'm glad there are people like you uh, who are working on that. Um, the usability in issue in general uh, with encryption and, and technologies like this is something that probably will be around forever. I mean, so long as you have these addresses where you're sending money are these 64 character long crazy strings or however long they are, 80 something or whatever, um, then it's not going to be usable. Uh, and so long as Zcash client is just a Linux terminal application, 
then it's not going to reach the the average person. Um, I think part of the reason we decided we didn't launch with a, with a GUI is just there wasn't enough time, uh, or and we didn't have have enough resources to d to develop it. Um, so, you know, I th it would be great to see more more UX designers in general just getting into security and privacy. Uh, there's one organization aware of Simply Secure, uh, which, which advocates towards that end. Uh, some other people in other groups that are working on that problem, but. Um, yeah, I think it's a bigger problem. I can't answer it right now, you know. Yes, Rihanna. I guess I'm curious about the underlying reasons for which you want to encourage or incentivize people to use shielded transactions rather than transparent. And so, like, the first couple reasons that I can think of off the top of my head are, like, the signal-to-noise issue where if you sort of normalize shielded transactions, it doesn't make them look weirder or worth or like suspicious. Right. And the scarcity problem where you have sort of a finite space that will eventually entirely be allocated. And so maybe you want to incentivize people to use shielded ones because you don't want people using up so much of, 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 of the Zcash that will eventually be out there right. on transparent transactions when there are people out there who might really want to use it for shielded transactions. So you don't want to you know, use the whole space up on, on public stuff. And so I'm just curious, like, if you can elucidate more specifically what the concerns are, or maybe it's like a resource consumption thing, I don't know. So I'm just curious about, like, aside from just generally sort of the more idealistic, like, cypherpunk ideas of, like, yeah, people yeah. should be able to do secure anonymous e-gold. Like, sure. why in particular do you want to get people to switch over? And do you have any, like, minimum threshold that I you're shooting for? You had sort I of mean, a majority minority. I think you've essentially stated it, which is, um, like, so the more shielded transactions there are, the more value that is uh, passing through shielded addresses, then um, the better privacy protections for everyone else who's using Zcash. Uh, the total, like the total value store, is made up of that differential between shielded versus transparent. Um, so if if the value if as long as coins are moving through transparent addresses, they'll be totally traceable. But as soon as they hit a shielded address, then uh, the buck stops there, so to speak. And so um, for everyone else using the currency, if you can transfer it th through shielding, then you know that's making use of the privacy features. I mean. Just privacy. That's the reason, you know. That's a very good question. Um, so, does XCAT mean that you can launder any coin of any currency? Launder. Launder. Like erase the history of. Oh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Mix. Um, no, I don't know much about XCAT. Um, some other people in the company working on that. Um, may want to talk to Jay Graber or Nathan Wilcox. Is design more as a pure exchange? Yeah, like a like you can just swap one for the other, and the like the chains will be linked somehow. Linkability. But it, it, I, I imagine the intention of that is to enable the mixing features on other chains, or is it more as a just exchange Interoper kind of interoperability? Got it. So Basically. you can. Uh, is that just for resources, or that also include the ability to invoke transactions? Revoke? Invoke. Oh, invoke? Um, what do you mean resources? Sorry. So, um, like ERC-20 tokens from uh, Ethereum or... Right. Like 20 is, Ethereum is, is, for is 20 it simply like I, I lock up... Uh, um, I lock up some, some tokens or some ethers in a contract, and then I can swap right. that out using the atomic transaction, or is it like I can actually yeah. invoke a transaction? I don't know if, if I can explain XCAT that well, but I, I think the way it works is essentially like it's feature you enable where, um, like, so you have some z value of Zcash locally or whatever that is linked to some value in Ethereum. Got it. Right? <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm not the one who, who works on it or develops it. Cool. Th thanks a lot, everyone. Thank you, Kevin. So what we normally do at this point in Privacy Lab, we <coughs> have until about 7 if people want to stay and talk with each other.
each other or talk with us. Um, but you're welcome to just sort of informally network with each other. Um, you can certainly leave early if you need to leave. Um, but we usually just kind of open this up as a casual networking time.